Down into the depths you go with to return one day for sure. I've got to pick up this poo now, Mr. Spide. I've got to pick up this poo. I say, I've got to pick up this poo now, Mr. Spider. Are you alright? Right, I'm, I'm just going to have to eject you from the area. You might get crushed. I know you think you're fucking tough. Right? But you ain't that fucking tough. Please remove yourself from the area. Sir? I'm going to have to turn off the camera and deal with this. You're right there. You're right there. Looking a wee bit sorry for you, then. You're right. You're right. Marvel. Good luck to you. Good luck to you, little fucking gem. Shine on you crazy beyond the sky diamond. Here I am, um, stood with my lovely young flam, and I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm preparing some wood for, um, for lighting the fire a little bit later, and I'm thinking about what I should say to you in my next video, so I thought, well, let's just record a bit of it now, even though it will probably be better off said on a sunny day up a tree or something. Um, Concerning <coughs> vaccination, um, I just want to clarify basically that it felt to me a bit like getting raped. Um, so that's why I'm still a little bit upset about it. And so this isn't about the efficacy necessarily of the vaccination. It's not about the science. It's about how we behave towards one another. And um, I, I chose in the end, right, to get vaccinated, but I, I'm, I'm not very happy about it. it. It was very difficult for me and it felt very coercive. 
um, so I still have some charge around it. Um, and basically, <coughs> the kind of issues <coughs> remind me quite a lot of what I learned working in a um, psychiatric institution for 18 months. Um, and so I understand kind of how to treat distressed people. I mean, it makes me think, it makes me feel like saying, you know, if you try it again, I'll, I'll set off my rape alarm or I'll just become very difficult, you know. I'll start fucking screaming. Um, but I won't because I've learned from certain experiences that I've had and, and I'll find some other way to let, let you know. In fact, that's kind of what I'm up to at the moment. Um, and so... So, that's what this place is, but by which I mean the world, this place I'm speaking into. Um, it, it's an insane asylum, and if you can't see that, then you're not there yet. Um, and where I'm standing, where I am, where I live, this is a, a sanctuary. And the main difference that I can think of just now between an asylum and a sanctuary is that the asylum is for everyone. Everyone has a right to asylum. But... You, you have to... You, you have to cross a kind of threshold in yourself in order to realise sanctuary. Um, yeah. And both, both asylum and sanctuary are very different from uh, reserves, which are more kind of civilised and bureaucratic and stuff. Um, anyway, I'll talk m more about this and I'll write more about this. It, it, it's part of my like mental framework that's developed somehow. Right, peace. No, I, I just shut up now. <laughs> First Violet. 3rd of February. Out the front of the house. I'm, <clears throat> I might change tack a bit on the internet, um, but not on the internet. I'll, I'll set something up on the internet, um, but there are certain things that perhaps it's not wise to uh, go on about too much. I, I don't know. The, my internet's gone at the moment, and I wonder if it's like the techno fucking overlords. Uh, uh, fucking hell! You know, fucking with me. But it could just be this lot. Because they do that sometimes too. Um, at any rate, I don't know what I'm doing, but I might... Uh, Why have I got this little bit of Irish in me? I don't know where things come from sometimes. I might do something else here and in general just present um, love poetry. But if you know how to read love poetry, you understand how uh, revolutionary love really is. And you know, you understand how difficult and challenging peace is. Um, so I might, you might have to read me you know, as you should through metaphor realization, um, to understand.
This is beautiful, isn't it? It's a quince. A, a kind of ornamental and perhaps even a, a, oriental quince. Really beautiful, comes out in early spring. Always a delight. This is the fairy corner. It's like right next to our neighbour's yard. So it sometimes smells a bit uh, polluted and we dig up a lot of plastic and rubble and stuff here. But uh, is it, that's a good place, I think, to consecrate to the fairies. That's a tree fern we just planted this year. And this is like old post I uh, I found somewhere and kind of erected there and there's like a funny little fellow his eyes have fallen out he used to have eyes um, and this is like mix of hawthorn and blackthorn and there's a little pond down there through there covered in brambles is our snake garden anyway I'll I'll, I'll show you all that sometime. I just kind of was here, so I thought I'd show you the, the fairy portals. And uh, through there somewhere is, is or and will be Wayback's Gate. Hello and welcome to How to Be a Shaman with Power Random Sam Dub. It's quite simple really. Find your spirit animal, find some magical creature and get them, make them teach you a song. Here's one I learned from a pear-shaped parrot. It's called How to Blow Bubbles Out Your Bum. What could be more magical than that? First you get in the bath, then you do a little fart, and that's How to Blow Bubbles Out Your Bum. First you get in the bath, then you do a little fart, and that's How to Blow Bubbles Out Your Bum. We had a bit of an accident. I don't know, an event, a disaster, catastrophe, catastrophe. Quite a big storm yesterday, uh, apparently, apparently it was called Louis or something. Anyway, this is what he's done to our uh, ruin. Right, here we are, look at that. There was a, there was a, a lovely rose. Well, there still is a lovely rose. She's just buried. New dawn. So, new dawn will have to rise again some other day. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Um, and um, that eve of the ruin was always a bit on the wonk uh, and actually what's happened is kind of one of the things uh, I was half thinking about doing to it so uh, 
when I texted the wife yesterday she was at work and sort of told her what had happened uh, she was basically like uh, be safe or whatever but also nin Ninfa vibes are coming which is great Ninfa is one of our favourite gardens which we hope to visit one day um, Italy somewhere lovely romantic garden among ruins so uh, you can sort of see we've had um, Kestrel spending quite a lot of time on the ruin recently uh, and around the place uh, uh, hoping he might um, he might nest here this year that would be nice or maybe the, he or she is, is nesting around the place already anyway there's enough waffle from me I'll have to get up there and put a f and sort it all out. We did pay some guys to do all of that. You can see that the uh, top of the ruin is covered in a, in a couch of uh, show or lime crete. Um, and they replaced the two uh, things there, although with new stones, when we asked them to find old stones, so it would sort of match, but anyway, but yeah, there, there was some kind of holes in uh, in around there that were looking a bit precarious and I should have just fucking dealt with it, but you know, well, basically don't expect, don't expect anyone to actually do a fucking proper job of things nowadays unless uh so you just have to do the best you can is how it's ended up for me uh oh yeah fuck you guys what intriguing forms Clang, bash, claw! What intriguing forms! Clang, bash, claw! What intriguing forms! Hello? I'm glad there's no one here. There's no one here. Are you? I don't know. Sometimes I sometimes think I'm like, like if someone were here, we could talk about me. <laughs> we could talk about me. No. There's no one here. I sometimes, I sometimes think I'm quite like it when someone over here. I'd like it if there was someone here. We can talk about me! No. No, I'm quite glad there's no one here. I'm quite glad there's no one here. My hands is cold! My hands is cold! What is your hands cold? 
This one's called cold. And this one's called schmold. Cold and schmold. Well, that's that, is it? It's a lovely afternoon in early March and I'm pollarding, maybe, the willows, lovely yellow willow, <clears throat> makes fresh yellow growth come back every year so puts on a nice display in winter uh, and it's quite a good firewood actually even though there's a lot of water in it so um, it's quite heavy and then the water goes and it's quite light and it burns quite quick but it burns hot um, so ideally you use it for like lighting the fire and getting it going again and you mix it with a bit of harder wood but um, even if you're just running on willow you just have a different kind of fire where kind of comes and goes in waves so it comes up gets nice and hot and then it dies down and then build it up again uh, and it works it, it works as do I as do you it's a nice uh, yellow willow it's particularly good for basket basket weaving, ba basketry um, and these are all from well a few different trees but they're all basically the same the same tree and we got it everywhere willow's great you can just uh, stick it in the clay and it grows a new tree it's cool There's a pile of sticks, pile of sticks from last year, would be good for lighting the fire. Probably made a few bugs and stuff happy as well. You can see that we've dotted it around in quite a few places. Uh, it's a good pioneer, pioneer tree as well, so uh, its roots and leaves and stuff all help improve the soil and make it a bit friendlier for, for other trees that we might plant eventually. No, I won't film the fucking check here. We also use them for posts as well. They make great living fence posts. So that's what she's doing there. And I'm using these motherfuckers which are pretty fucking handy for those bigger stickages.
Um, all that will ever really make you happy is the happiness of someone else who is none other than you, not really other than you. My, my path has been happiness, like... But right from the outset, I could only ever be happy with the truth, you know? Like, uh, I don't really understand how other people think about happiness. Um, and I don't, I don't understand... I, I understand a bit more how other people think of truth. I can sort of see where some of them are coming from, but... For instance, for me, um... It was, it was always going to be... truth, you know? I mean, how can you be happy if it's not true happiness, if it's not real happiness? So if you search for ha penis, ha ha penis, then you're going to find one, eventually, um... truth. And um, a lot of wrong can come from that too, um, if it's not pure. Um, and if you assume you know what the happiness of someone else is going to be, you know, what would, what's right for them, what's better for them, you might end up like some kind of great philanthropist who's like, building fucking monorails in the sky because you think that's what's going to make other people happy. All that's going to make other people happy is making other people happy. You can't really go wrong with it. Every way in which that goes wrong is wrong. But anyway, I don't know, you know? Do you know, you, do you... Do we... Do we get it? You know, these are the kind of things I, I'm just gonna have to... keep on and on and on about, um... And that I have been on and on and on about. Um, I, and, I, and I guess I, I reached some moments of realisation in which my level of, of clarity increases um, and I have more of a clue uh, about what I do have a clue about which is, is, is you Sure. I mean, yes, it's, 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 so long as we see the kind of impossible equals sign between our eyes, what makes me happy is making you happy, but what makes you happy is making me happy, except that this isn't some kind of like this isn't really a loop, and it's not really an exchange of anything. Um, it's a, a, a state that we're always already in. Um, you are happy, you know, we are happy, and, and there's no degrees of happiness. If you're happy, you're insanely pleased. No matter how it seems, no matter how grey the insanity of your pleasure appears. No matter how, like, spotty or broken-toothed or fucking grotty. One thing you can be sure of is that it won't be that fucking polished. I mean, that's what... one of the things that strikes me, you know. There won't be any kind of attempt to make it appear 
like someone else's idea of what happiness might be or what should be happy, you know, what happiness should be. <sighs> That's, this is reason, what I'm saying is reason and you understand how completely beyond reason it is. Uh, gloriously so, like every little thing, every... Because there isn't, you know, there isn't a, a drop of light, there isn't a drop of water, even though there are. Even though there are. There aren't. There, there are not. Hey ladybug, don't go. Don't go. You know, a, a, a human couldn't wiggle you the way that wind does. A human could never wiggle you the way that wind does. You know, a human could never wiggle you the way that wind does. You know that, right? No human could ever wiggle you the way that wind does. No human could ever wiggle you the way that wind does. Never would you wiggle and wave and waggle like that for a human, the way you do for the wind. Ah, goodness. Sunshine and rain on this early spring day, sometime in March, I think it's the 12th, doesn't really matter. 
was just going to say, I was just thinking that um, sublimation for me is is the opposite of repression. Um, and you might think of like uh, the opposite of repression as just like doing whatever you like, like uh, following every desire and giving it expression. Um, Maybe that is in a, in a way. Maybe maybe I'm not talking about the opposite. I'm talking about what what the opposite is for me, which is sublimation. Which is to say that what the non-repressive or unrepressive person, say some sort of liberal, um, might be given expression to, is like not actually what it necessarily is um, th that for me is a kind of key to what uh, how I feel about about sublimation um, as, as an artist um, that for instance the libido or, or, or sexual energy isn't necessarily sexual energy um, so to, which is strange, it's not straightforward, this this is just something which is occurring to me. Um, because, because I am interested in the sublime and I don't think that, um, I don't think that's just something you can just want to do, you know, it's something that has to happen to you. Um, and that's why I'm interested in it, because it does happen to me. It's just that the, the sublime for me is... Um, not necessarily, you know, standing on top of a, a mountain, or it's not necessarily being overwhelmed by by nature in in its grandest um, clothes, hat, form, or whatever. Um, it can be quite small and even even gentle. Um, there's something sublime about the gentle for me. Like the other day, the the. the the peace that I was experiencing was very gentle, but at the same time it, it was really challenging and even because of that gentleness it was challenging. Um, I c it's still there, it's still here obviously, but I couldn't have, have borne the gentle touch of it uh, w without change or the appearance of, of change. For you know, when you're touching something that's still, it, it can agitate other aspects of you, um, which is good. It, that's all part of the work. It's part of what I'm sort of talking about now. Um, but yeah, basically, my way of saying what the sublime is for me, uh, and I think you know, if if we're in a different time from the last time they were seriously talking about the sublime so far as I know which was like 18th century so you know I'm still a bit old-fashioned so so two three hundred years later the sublime is, is not about the grandeur of nature it's about the absolute cute. The absolute cute. Which I should, um, which I'm trying to work some stuff out about. Uh, it's just one of those kind of jokes that I realise I'm serious about. I mean, all, all of my jokes are things that I'm serious about. Um, it's a it doesn't, you know, so that's good, they don't have to be funny. Mm. I don't have a specific, like, go-to handy example for the absolute cute. I mentioned something in a book the other day, I remember being young and um, a, cu a kitten, a kitten being put on my lap. Um, 
by my mum, I think, and, th and then she would have left the room. And uh, I experienced the touch of the sublimity of, of the cute there. Maybe, it, maybe it's nails, claws, sorry, like dug into me or something. But really what I remember is the sense of the uncanny, the, the utter strangeness, the, a the alienness of, of, of this uh, creature upon me, that, that it's, it's difference from me. Um, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, so there's this thing that you can get very close to and um, it's cute, it's sweet, it's, it's gentle, but it's um, alien, say. It goes very far. The difference that opens up between us it is the the abyss. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's just a thing to say. And I, the only other thing I was thinking is that is that I really am weirdly old-fashioned um, in how I feel about things. But I won't talk about that now. I'm old. I'm old-fashioned. But I, I, I'm not a conservative or anything. Um, and I'm obviously not a Tory. I, I hope that's obvious. Anyway, I don't really know much about politics or care much about those things. I just wanted to make that little note about um, repression versus sublimation. I found this delicate conical seashell, snail shell, J just the other day I was visiting a graveyard with my wife and her mother visit, visit, visiting the grave of my father-in-law and while they tended to the plot I was off investigating the wall, the old stone wall and I found this shell um, trapped between two stones and so amused myself with the with the game of um, trying to get it loose um, it struck me as a, ve a very precious little thing and so I, I broke a pair of stalks and um, with some jiggling ma managed to get it loose I presumed it was empty uh, all I could see was perhaps a tiny dehydrated scrap at the very end of its uh, shell um, so, so I tucked it in the fold of my wallet and, and brought it home along with these pine cones uh, as a as an uh, item of interest and then this morning as I come to write uh, I see the shell stuck to the pine cone and I think it must have just got stuck there originally and then I look a little closer and I see this marvellous um, occurrence the little fellow has woken so I'm going to um, take him outside to one of our walls and uh, hopes he finds hope, hopes he finds something to eat there
Uh. <clears throat> I guess I leave you there, my friend. See if you find anything of interest. I don't know if we have other conicals around. Uh, I hope it's all right for you. Better than being stuck in a fucking crack. Dying a slow death, I suppose. Now you're free. Out and about to die your slow death. Have a good death, little friend. That's what this is. Got some Rome's, Rome's ruin here, look. Rome's ruin. I just came back to check on him. Uh, I couldn't see him on the pine cone and I worried. I worried that a sparrow had eaten him already, but um, he's fine, look, there he is. So there's an old Japanese proverb um, that I read just the other day that this snail r reminded me of. For the ground between a snail's horns, what used to fight the ground between a snail's horns, what used to fight. It's from Arthur Whaley's translation of The Lady Who Loved Insects. A very fine lady indeed. It's a sweet potato. It's a sweet potato shaped. What Oscar is a sweet potato? This was one of his names. He was really looking like a potato with legs. Thank you. 
I'm fucking talking away to myself, recording audio, and I thought I would just, because I mentioned something on video the other day about sublimation, and I just said something to myself then that made me realise uh, that that's, um, ugh, there's like the fucking robot shit. Robot shit. That's what they build now. And uh, if, if you've seen our place, that's what they used to build. I can't fucking build anything. I build up, I can build up to a big disappointment. No, I'm building something too. Um, the, the wilds, right, the wilds as I call them, uh, they don't quite exist yet properly. They're somewhere we, we hold ourselves back from, right? You can't, we, we, we can't go there unless we hold ourselves back from it. That's what space is, as well. Right, so that's like sublimation. Because you're, you're holding something back. You're not repressing it, but you're turning it into something. And what you're turning it into is you're going there. You're entering it. You enter that which you hold yourself back from. That's art. Or, or poetry or something for me. The only reason I was talking or thinking about this at all, sorry if there's fucking wind on the mic. this bunch of evil fucking beasts. Look at you. Evil bastards. Aren't you? I fucking love you. I fucking love the bunch of you. You beastly fucking bastards. But you're not getting any of this. You're not having none of it. You're not having none of it. It's all mine. What do you think is going on when you um, desire something which does not fit with your um, emotional reality. So you might de you might desire or think that you desire something, but then if you pay attention to your emotional reality, what you imagine you you desire doesn't fit with that. So, so what does that mean then about, about that? desire? Is it just, um, a delusion? I mean, it's, it's, it's real, it's there, but it doesn't make sense. It won't become real, because it doesn't make sense, it doesn't fit with your emotional reality. I think there's a lot of 
a lot of that going on in the world somehow, the chasing after desires or, or kind of urges which, which were we to really think or feel about it don't make sense in terms of our emotional reality but you know what is our emotional reality so I'm maybe I'm just out of touch with how uh, people really feel I mean there's obviously there's no such thing as how people really feel and all of that nice big rocks lots and lots What it seems to suggest is that, like, some of what you're feeling, you might actually just think that you're feeling. Um, others... There's an interesting way in which, like, thought is, is really doubt-like. Uh, people use thought to reach all kinds of states of of, 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 of of more or less certainty but there's something about thought that is uncertain and there's something about feeling which is very sure but then it's not knowledge um, so much as knowing or intuition or that kind of things. I, I just feel like somewhere between thought as doubt and um, feeling as certainty, there's um, feeling as knowing and thought as doubt, there, there's, there's something of what faith is for me. That lump is a bit of a killer and um, there's just no point in me trying to move that by myself, even though I could. That's one of the things I've learned, just lovely wifey can help with that. She is uh, delicate in certain ways, but so am I. Um, she's pretty, she's fucking capable. We, we manage. I'm going to sort of shut up soon almost now. I was just thinking of um, the feeling of frustration that you that I get sometimes when I'm uh, working alone <clears throat> and I'm like you know why am I having to do all this by myself um, is it because I'm a, a difficult person blah 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 in terms of a feeling, I mean, the, f the frustration is there. I mean, it's just part of the rage of having to do something difficult. In that case, the, the rage is kind of on your side because it's a power coming up from within you that's actually helping you accomplish what is difficult for you. But there can be a lot of kind of thought as well about injustice and stuff and uh, I think I have to do a lot of hard stuff by myself um, I've, I've always been someone who is happy with working by themselves um, I'm not bad though in groups and things like that I'm not a complete arsehole or anything I'm not really that much of a difficult person um, I'm not really a difficult person. I'm not really a difficult person. I, th I, I think... I think there is a karmic aspect to this, to this place and, and to things. Um, both of us have problems to some degree with community um, because there isn't really one, you know. Um, So that so there's a kind of stubborn resistance um, to, 
because because something's not what it could be um, and uh, that's it's frustrating I don't know why I'm sort of saying this uh, apart from it's a an issue for me and, and I suppose there's other people out there who are I mean almost everyone is dealing with something that they're completely alone in dealing with and that's um There's, that's, there's something there, there's something in that, I mean that's a, of great value. It's just difficult, um, which is part of the, the value of it, you know, I mean, the best things in life probably aren't free, but still, like the birds say, cheap cheap. Last word on this for today then, it's just like, the reason I'm sort of saying it has something to do with this idea of sublimation and those kind of things, um, which for me is something that somehow unites um, art and religion. Um, and I, th I think, I guess, it would make me more kind of Jungian and Freudian to put another random polarity on it the, uh, some of the base energy for me although it's might well be libido I don't know I think there's something I mean there's something divine about sex potentially anyway um, and, and this is all kind of um, the, the realm of, of, of love and I think that's where our problems really are, because I, I do think I do think there's all kinds of problems that can look sexual, and some of the um, some of the sexual liberation and stuff can can seem like a sexual problem as much as it's like. Freedom are not are not my problem. I don't think. I think the real the the real problem is always going to be love. Um, and maybe it's better to see it as a problem than than like a solution that all you need, because um, because it's both. But it's probably more helpful to look at how problematic it is. Uh, so those are just some things for, and you know, yeah, the simplest thing it, and the, the greatest thing is to, is to love alone um, and to turn your love towards that which scares you most or God, you know, um, because that's like, quite satisfying. And what are you really scared of? Because you might be scared of something being taken from you, but then to have that thing taken from you might not necessarily be God. So is it the thing being taken from you that you're scared of, or is it what that might lead to? I mean, or have you realised how terrible it might be to never again be uh, separate from that thing? I mean, um...
is it is this isn't an easy kind of sense to make. And it's not an easy thing to make sense of. As much as it might seem um like I I'm saying something or that I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about but I don't quite know what that is. I it's a uh, it's a little bit elsewhere. <coughs> Anyway, that's a bit heavy, uh, can easily turn. It's good, I, 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 one of the things I'm trying to learn to do with uh, balance and equilibrium and stuff is to... Um, ...appreciate awesomeness, dreadfulness and uh, those kind of things. Uh, to I really want to allow myself to get carried away but that's that has a certain specific way in a, in a certain specific way and there's other ways I don't like getting carried away so it's one of the problems when you start to um, speak um, it's easy to go on too long, um, and there comes a time when you need to th think. But that kind of thinking is, is kind of a, a, is, is opening a space for feeling. You talk to yourself a bit, and you. You bring some things up, and you don't have to hold on to them there. All part of the work. the fuck is that motherfucker? Well that was quite impressive in a slightly scary way. Well done, guys. That was starting to feel a little, a little bit potentially lethal down there, so I've come up, come up on the ladder to start clearing some of these off, doing this. How's the moon look? Yeah, so...